Bartholomew Kuman is Devil Fruit is not what you think it is. Over a year ago, I was the driving force behind Luffy being inspired by beautiful India's Hanumanji. At the time, I made a very long video explaining why Luffy actually has a Zoan, a Hitohito no Mi specifically. And thanks to chapter 1044, that theory turned out to be true, but this time it's going to be Kuma's turn. And when I tell you the name of Kuma's Devil Fruit, I promise you are going to be absolutely mind blown. Most One Piece fans believe that Queen Lily of Alabasta Kingdom had the pawpaw fruit originally and for good reason. Emu said that Lily spread the poneglyphs on that fateful day and Occam's Razor points at the solution being the pawpaw devil fruit. Now this idea has even made its way to Vivi being that she's the descendant of Queen Lily, meaning that Vivi for many other reasons too will end up with this pawpaw devil fruit. But to focus on Kuma, the last time we saw him was during chapter 1092 at Marijua. The important detail that everyone seems to miss is that this took place one day ago. This means that Kuma has plenty of time to go all the way from Marijua to Vegapunk's Egghead Island. And this works out perfectly for Vivi because we know that Vivi is currently traveling with Big News Morgans, who just so happened to eavesdrop on Egghead Island's information because he's approaching the island with Vivi. So basically, Luffy, Vivi, and Kuma as a trio are about to meet up on Egghead Island for Kuma's Devil Fruit. But before we jump into that, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for the sickest One Piece theory videos on all of YouTube. And my previous channel was hacked at 33,000 subscribers, so make sure you subscribe to this brand new channel. Like seriously, scroll down and double check. And before we jump into this theory video and provide all of the evidences today, I just have to shout out a few people from my Discord server that helped me put this together. Shout out to King J from my Discord server, shout out to Mr. Miles, and shout out to Charlotte D. Axe. All of us came together and we had a great discussion based on this video that you're about to watch, all of these mind-blowing conclusions, and I just have to give them some credit. These are my guys. They really know their stuff. Now, the first question that you have is why does Kuma have a devil fruit? Why does he have a Hito Hito no Mi, a mythical Zoan in the first place? Well, first of all, Odo already drew all of the warlords as children, and at that time, Kuma didn't have those large ears on him as a kid. But then again at Saba Odi and many other times throughout the story, we see these large ears on Kuma's head. But what's very weird is we know that Kuma already had the pawpaw fruit when he was friends with Vegapunk. And even when he wasn't wearing his normal hat, we could see these ears that are on his head, meaning that this hat had nothing to do with the ears on Kuma's head. And I want you to hold on to that detail because as we know, the pawpaw fruit is said to be a paramecia style devil fruit. I'm bringing that into question because what kind of paramecia would supply cat paws in your hands? What kind of paramecia would plant and ears on your head. That doesn't really make sense for a paramecia style devil fruit and if anything this would apply to zoans or mythical zoans. When you think about Luffy's Hito Hito no Mi Maronika devil fruit, it made his body permanently rubber and he doesn't even have to activate it. He's just innately rubber from now on. So I would argue that he has these cat paws on his hands and he has these large ears on his head not because of a paramecia but because of a zoan. And what's also more interesting is these are animalistic properties. These are animalistic traits and attributes. This has nothing to do with a paramecia and I think the reason that is setting this up and setting up all these animalistic characteristics to Kuma isn't because he has a paramecia devil fruit, it's because he has a mythical Zoan. So again, look at the cat paws on his hand, look at the big ears on his head even without the hat. This is going to be a telltale sign that Oda is setting up a huge plot twist for Kuma and his devil fruit. And just a moment ago, I mentioned how Kuma has these cat paws on his hands. If we turn our attention to Thriller Bark and we look at the chapter where his devil fruit, the pawpaw fruit, is finally explained, look at what Robin has to say. She literally visualizes a cat and this is a a very silly stark moment that like really stands out and makes this question what is this devil fruit actually this is one of those moments that Oda throws in that's really silly that ends up foreshadowing and meaning a lot in the grand scheme of things compare this to when Luffy was talking to Momonosuke and he outright told Momonosuke oh I don't know I don't have a Zoan style devil fruit that obviously wasn't true we know he has a Zoan type devil fruit so this seems like it's something Oda would do this seems like the type of foreshadowing that Oda is known for throw these random clues in throw these random silly panels in that end up foreshadowing and end up becoming huge for the story. Now also, think about One Piece chapter 1044. This is when Luffy was finally shown to be Sun God Nika and it was finally revealed that he has a mythical Zoan. But let's turn our attention to what the Gorosei have to say. They mention that Zoan devil fruits have a will or a mind of their own. And when you think about Kuma and you think about Lily, does this logic apply to them? I would argue yes. When we look at Queen Lily, she was actually the co-founder of the D clan because she passed on this initial. And then when we turn our attention to Kuma, he's also the co-founder of the Revolutionary Army. He is the co-founder founder and bringing another yet revolution to the One Piece story because of that. So I would argue that this devil fruit that Kuma has is a Zoan and it has a will of their own and it likes to go to people who bring revolutions, people who are co-founders to things. And also keep in mind Kuma and Lily in many ways are parallels and this is going to be important for later on in the video. This devil fruit that Lily potentially had, the devil fruit that Kuma has, has a will of their own and is purposefully choosing these characters. Now let's look at the Egghead Island arc and see what kind of information that arc even holds. We know that Luchi was saying that 
Esper, the Kuma Seraphim, was acting like a reckless boy and he wasn't following orders. I find this to be interesting because there's 50,000 Kumas around the One Piece world who seem to operate normally, again except for Esper and this normal Kuma that we see running to Marijua. Why are they acting different? Why are they having their own motives? It's because Zoans have a will of their own. This is very unlike Paramecia's. It was never said that Paramecia's have a will of their own, but do you know what kind of Devil Fruits do have a mind of their own? Do you know what kind of Devil Fruits have a will of their own? Mythical Zoans. Now at this point, you're probably wondering, okay, maybe Kuma does have a secret Zoan, a secret mythical Zoan. What would this Devil Fruit be then? Now, if you think about the detail during Thriller Bark, we know that Robin compared Kuma's paws to a cat specifically, and she had a whole visualization about that. I would argue that Kuma's Devil Fruit will happen to fit a cat, and I have many great reasons to supply this argument. Which Straw Hat was the one that pictured Kuma's fruit as a cat type of thing? Robin. And which arc did Robin join the Straw Hats in? Alabasta. And what is Alabasta based on? It's based on Egypt. This is a very common thought process by Oda, and this is how he writes his story. This is how he uses the narrative to foreshadow future events. So again, I would argue that this mythical Zoan not only applies to a cat, but it's going to come from the culture and the mythology of Egypt. Now, Egypt is known for many gods and goddesses, and some even take the form of a cat like the Sphinx. But seeing how we saw a Sphinx and Impel down, a huge beast running around terrorizing the jail, and we also saw an island that Marco lives on named Sphinx, I would argue that Oda's not going to replicate this kind of thing. He's not going to reuse Sphinx over and over again. And I would argue that it's going to be some other cat-like deity from Egypt that works with Kuma and his devil fruit, and I actually have a perfect, perfect, amazing option for what this cat-like deity would be. Kuma's true devil fruit in his cat goddess that I'm referring to is known as Bastet. Now, Bastet was known as the goddess of protection, pleasure, and the bringer of good health. She had the head of a cat and a slender female body, and Bastet was even known as the daughter of Ra. Now, to quickly go over it and give you like a quick summary, Ra in Egyptian mythology was known as the sun god. Now, again, many people would argue that Queen Lily of Alabasta Kingdom was the former holder, the original holder of this Bastet or this Paw Paw Devil Fruit. Now, would this make a lot of sense with Bastet from what we know about Egypt? Yes, because we know that Queen Lily not only passed down the D clan initial, but she was also the one that didn't join the world government when the ancient kingdom fell. So we can easily create a connection between Queen Lily, Joy Boy, Sun God Nika, and the ancient kingdom, which would then mean that Queen Lily most likely had a connection with the Sun God. Now, if you take a step back and look at it, Bastet was connected to the Sun God. It was the daughter of the Sun God. So we could possibly argue that the same case applies to Lily. Queen Lily must have been the daughter of the Sun God. And speaking about Egypt's Bastet, it was also said that images of Bastet were often carved from alabaster. And alabaster is a type of mineral, it's a type of rock that was used often to create sculptures. Now this means that Bastet, the cat goddess of Egypt, aligns with alabaster. And the easy simple connection we can make to One Piece is from alabaster and alabasta, the country that Vivi's from. So if you consider that this theory might be true or if it even has a chance, things like this seem like very obvious foreshadowing from Oda. It's even crazier when you think about Kuma and his inventory because we first really met him at Thriller Bark. And when he was first showing up, he was even carrying around a Bible the whole time, which people to this day still question. But more importantly, on the cover of this Bible that Kuma's carrying around, we can see sun representation and symbolism, but also a woman. Could this be the daughter of the sun god? Could this be Queen Lily of the Alabasta Kingdom? If Queen Lily originally had the Bastet devil fruit, then it would make a lot of sense that she was connected to sun god Ra, or sun god Nika. And it would also line up with how the woman on the cover has all this sun symbolism. But speaking about Thriller Bark, let's take a little bit of a deeper dive into why it's so important. Like when Kuma finally got to the island of Thriller Bark, can you guess which Straw Hat was the very first one to spot him? Nami, who Oda always coined as the cat burglar. It's definitely within Oda's parameters and his writing style to have this guy with a secret cat devil fruit get spotted by the cat burglar. It lines up all too well. And even later on during the arc when Kuma starts attacking Zoro and the others, people even begin to explain his devil fruit. This episode is called It Repels Everything, Kuma's Paw Paw Devil Fruit. But here's the crazy twist to it all. The chapter for that episode is 484, and of all people to put on that cover, the chapter that explained Kuma's devil fruit is Vivi. This wasn't even a part of a cover story, it wasn't a reader request, it was Oda choosing to add Vivi on the cover specifically. And this connects perfectly to Vivi, who is a descendant of Lily, who I hypothesized had the Bastet devil fruit originally. Now looking at Queen Lily and Princess Vivi, it's pretty apparent that they share a lot of similarities and parallels. Both of them have a similar face structure, both of them are world nobles, and both of them bring a revolutionary with the respective Dawnbringers of this era. But being that Vivi is on the cover of this chapter explaining Kuma's devil fruit makes me believe that Vivi's about to be the very next user of this Bastet devil fruit. Now what makes this even crazier is the true lore behind Egypt and Bastet when it comes to her mythology. In Egyptian mythology, Bastet's main location was the Nile, and the Nile crocodile 
crocodile was responsible for many human deaths of the Nile. The Nile crocodile caused human deaths by the depletion of food and water. It's pretty apparent and it's pretty clear that all throughout the Alabasta Ark and Saga, it was crocodile using dance powder to remove the rain from the country. So just like the Nile crocodile, crocodile in one piece was depleting all of the water in Alabasta Kingdom. This proves that the Alabasta Ark was based on the Nile incident of Egypt and Vivi is based on Bastet of the Nile. Now, Bastet in Egyptian culture was also known to guard pregnant women and just women as a whole. I find this to be an easy connection to Queen Lily of the past because again, it's implied that she was the one who spread the poneglyphs. Her using Kuma's devil fruit would make that task pretty easy and it would explain why Emu used the phrase that fateful day. She used the devil fruit to do it in one day. But let's take this a step further. Let's look at her actual name, Queen Lily. There's a possible connection between Queen Lily and the Immaculate Island of Amazon Lily. So now we can connect the Bastet to Queen Lily again because both of these characters would be guarding women or even pregnant women on a daily basis. It is also said that Bastet protected cats of all pets and creatures in the world that they could choose from. Being that Queen Lily and Princess Vivi share a lot of similarities and parallels, we could almost treat these two characters as one and the same. Because Vivi has protected cats in the past, as seen in the moments of Vivi protecting the sacred sea cat of Alabasta, which may I remind you is directly based off Egypt, so it connects all too well that Vivi and Lily are connected to cats, let alone Bastet, as well as the ancient tomb that Crocodile and Cobra went inside of, because there was ancient cat sculptures everywhere. Yet not a single person in the Alabasta Ark was known or was shown to have a cat-esque devil fruit. Another fun fact about Bastet is that she was known as the goddess of perfume. When you look at the Empress Boa of Amazon Lily, we know that she has an attack called Perfume Femur. And Boa also has a ship known as the Perfume Yuta, which also might derive from the culture of Amazon Lily. And even during Whiskey Peak, Vivi did something absolutely mind-blowing to Zoro that fits this theory perfectly. Vivi got into a new stance and did something called Perfume Dance to hypnotize Zoro. So this would mean that Vivi of Alabasta yet again connects to Amazon Lily of all places. And don't forget, it's quite possible that Queen Lily created Amazon Lily, so it would make a lot of sense for that perfume culture to reach not only Boa, but Vivi. Now, Bastet's link to perfume also had her link to Nefertrum, who was also a goddess of perfume. Comparing this to Vivi and Lily, I found it to be way too close to their family name. Nefertari, Nefertrum. This is something that Oda would do. This is within his parameters. Now, Bastet is also a warrior that doesn't like men, and she's known for luring them into her traps for her own purposes. And this again connects to Amazon Lily because this is an island filled with women. They don't like men. We saw this from Luffy's time on Amazon Lily. So this would make a lot of sense if Queen Lily was related to Bastet from Egypt as she went to Amazon Lily and began her reign there, hating men, hating the culture that men propagated during the ancient kingdom. Now, another crazy detail about Bastet is her weapon of choice. It wasn't a spear. It wasn't a gun. It was a drum. Now, Luffy is known for the drums of liberation, and most people would attribute that to Sun God Nika or Joy Boy. And Joy Boy and Lily most likely had a connection in the past since she was the one who passed down the D initial. So if you connect the lore of Bastet to Vivi, it makes a lot of sense that she would work with Luffy, the drums of liberation during Alabasta Kingdom. But I would take that even further by arguing that Lily's gonna rejoin the Straw Hats and get with the real drums of liberation, just like Bastet of Egypt. And just look at the name of Kuma's fruit, Niku Niku no Mi. It almost sounds like Neko Neko, which is the Japanese word for cat. So with Bastet being a cat goddess in the One Piece world, Oda might have added teleportation to that devil fruit, just like how he added shockwaves to Buddha, or just like how he added imagination to the Nika devil fruit. It makes a lot of sense that mythical zones in the One Piece world would have all these powers and tools that don't really apply to animals. So when you look at Kuma warping around and repelling stuff, it would still work if he had a mythical Zoan. Now, Bastet was also known to ride through the sky with Sun God Ra, who was a falcon, and they would pull the sun. Could this connect both Queen Lily and Vivi? Because multiple times Oda showed Vivi riding on Pell, who was a falcon bird. Like seriously, this was drilled into our heads. Over and over again in the Alabasta arc, we see Lily riding on top of Pell, a falcon, just like Bastet. And this could even be a reason as to why Oda kept Pell alive, one of the worst fake out deaths in all of One Piece. Maybe later on in the story, when Vivi gets Lily's devil fruit and she's in her cat Bastet form, she would mirror Bastet by riding on a falcon. So all in all, this comes full circle. I am arguing today that Kuma's true devil fruit is the Hito Hito no Mi model Bastet. And the next question you're probably wondering is why would Vivi get this devil fruit? Out of all of the characters in the One Piece story to achieve and adopt this devil fruit, why Vivi? Well, Big News Morgans was able to spy on Egghead Island recently and get all of the information from that island. But how? It must be because Big News Morgans is sailing towards Egghead after the Marijua incident, so he's in Luffy's vicinity now. And we even know that at Marijua, when everything was going down, Vivi somehow ended up 
up with Big News Morgans. So it's a simple deduction. If Big News Morgans is eavesdropping on Egghead Island and we know Vivi's with him, then this must mean that Vivi too is also approaching Egghead Island. We also have to think about Vivi in her introduction, considering this whole theory kind of revolves around her. While a lot of One Piece fans, including myself, would argue that Vivi's gonna not only come back to the story, but reunite with the Straw Hats. Taking a look at her introduction, this took place during chapter 103. And currently in the manga, we are sitting at chapter 1093 with Vivi possibly approaching Egghead. If Oda can stall 10 chapters for these Kazaru and Saturn fights, it's possible that Vivi lands on Egghead during chapter 1103. So that would mean that her introduction took place on 103 and her reintroduction would take place on 1103, meaning there's a thousand chapters perfectly in between these two events. Again, this is within Oda's parameters. This is how he likes to write his story. He likes to put these big events on certain chapter numbers. Now, when it comes to all of the Devil Fruit users of the Straw Hat Pirates, they've been fitting number puns one through 10. And this was even mentioned officially to Oda through an SBS volume where a reader asked Oda about it. As of chapter 1092, every single number pun between one through 10 has been fulfilled except for two nine. And there's an open number pun on two nine being Niku Niku, which could relate to Kuma's Devil Fruit ending up in the Straw Hat crew. And to prove this isn't a coincidence, unlike the other two nine Devil Fruits in the story, like the Magnet Fruit and Kinemon's Fruit, Kuma's Devil Fruit must be the actual 2-9 Devil Fruit for the Straw Hats because Oda purposefully made Kuma's birthday 2-9. So again, if Kuma dies and Vivi adopts his Devil Fruit and reunites with the Straw Hats, this would fulfill the number scheme that Oda was asked about. And I would even argue that Luffy's fruit, the Nika, doesn't fit the 2-9 number scheme. And that's because the Gomu Gomu no Mi was the original Devil Fruit name, and that fits 5-7. If we want to go with Nika fulfilling the 2-9, then this would mean we would have to abandon the 5-7 originally, and we would have to get a Devil Fruit user to replace the 5-7. I don't really see that happening, and I think I know the true case. Luffy's gonna remain at 5-7 for Gomu Gomu no Mi, the original name of the Devil Fruit, and Kuma's Fruit, the original name Paw Paw, will be the 2-9 we are looking for. And what makes it even more suspicious is when you consider how Oda reacted to the SBS question. Oda said, what? Gosh, that surprised me. Why was I so surprised? No comment. Next? This is a telltale sign that Oda is hiding something, and he's very aware that readers caught on to what he's doing. Oda knows that readers spotted Kuma's Devil Fruit being a 2-9 pun, and that it's going to end up in the Straw Hat crew. And this would be absolute poetic justice if the Queen of Alabasta Kingdom, Lily, has the cat goddess from Egypt's Devil Fruit, Bastet. And due to many prophecies of the One Piece world, this Bastet Devil Fruit would go to Lily's descendant, Vivi. Now there's another interesting foreshadowing detail that I would argue leads towards Vivi reuniting with the Straw Hats. When Vivi first joined the crew and united with Luffy, this took place on Little Garden. And during Little Garden, we were sprinkled with clues that we would eventually have an Elbaf arc. And seeing how in recent chapters, even Vegapunk referenced Elbaf, I would argue that the next arc we're going to is the Elbaf arc. And since Vivi is with Morgans approaching Egghead, I believe she's going to land on Egghead Island and she's going to reunite with the Straw Hats going to Elbaf. And as far as Vivi's livelihood, we need to remember that at the Reverie in the manga, Emu brought Vivi's poster to the Gorose. This was the only poster out of the four posters that wasn't cut up and stabbed. And I believe that this implies that Emu wants Vivi alive and wouldn't want her killed. So if Emu finds out that Princess Vivi is at Egghead, meanwhile the Alabasta Revolutionary Koza is at Alabasta, Emu's probably not going to want to use Mother Flame on Egghead and risk killing Vivi. So no matter which way you spin it and which way you slice it, it makes most sense that Vivi's going to land on Egghead and go with the Straw Hats to Elbaf and survive. But not only that, it makes most sense that Kuma's Paw Paw Devil Fruit, who Robin hypothesized was a cat, is actually the Hito Hito no Mi model Bastet. And this cat goddess Devil Fruit is going to land in the hands of Princess Vivi.